Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. This is my E46 BMW and unfortunately I need new catalytic converters. And unfortunately the catalytic converters are integrated into the exhaust manifolds on this car, which means we need to take the exhaust manifolds out, which is I think probably the hardest thing to do on this vehicle. It's not hard per se, it's just annoying and it takes a long time and you can't really use power tools so it kind of sucks. Um, I already have videos on how to do this, the DIY on how to remove exhaust manifolds, another video on how to reinstall them. So that's not what I'm going to do in this video. This video I just kind of want to cover how to diagnose this problem or how I diagnose this problem so that you can know if uh, that's what's wrong with your car. In short, I have a P0430 code and uh, either a 420 or a 430 code basically means you need new catalytic converters. It means your, uh, cat your, your catalytic converter efficiency is not, is abnormal, is not normal. And you, for the most part, this is almost always not a false positive or there, there usually aren't very many, very many false positives with this. I suppose you could have like clogged fuel injectors, but typically uh, that's, that's, that's not that typical. I'm gonna show you proof, uh, I'm gonna show you how you actually diagnose this definitively by looking at the oxygen sensor outputs. So before we get into it, let's just cover uh, narrowband oxygen sensors, what they are and what they do. Basically, they're a little sensor, it's uh, screwed into your exhaust stream and uh, as the airflow, as the exhaust passes over it, it actually will produce a voltage. Oxygen sensor produces its own voltage actually, as long as it's hot enough. It needs to be, they need to be pr particularly hot. So typically they have heaters, they have heaters in them and then they have uh, a sensor circuit in them. So um, when there is an absence of oxygen, they're gonna produce around 0.9 volts, which is a rich condition. And when there's an abundance of oxygen, they're gonna produce 0.1 volts, which is a lean condition. On this particular vehicle, you're gonna actually gonna have four sensors. There are uh, two upstream sensors, which are also called the pre-cat sensors, which come before the catalytic converters. And there are two downstream sensors, which are post uh, catalytic converter, which are after the uh, catalytic converter. So uh, two sensors for each, one in bank one, one in bank two. So bank one is basically cylinders one through three, bank two is cylinders four through six. So that is the terminology there. You'll typically see something like uh, B1S1. That means bank one sensor one. That means it's upstream. And then you'll see something like B2S2, which is bank two sensor two. That's post catalytic converter that's downstream on bank two cylinders four through six so that's it that's that, that's the terminology there now what's the difference between the upstream and the downstream sensors essentially physically there's there is no difference they are literally the same exact thing and, and, and a narrowband o2 sensor is a narrowband o2 sensor but they are the the purpose of them is completely different the pre-cat sensors are there in order to tell the engine, uh, the engine computer, how the, the combustion process went at, right after the combustion process happened. So it tells the engine if you, you know, the, the mixture was too lean or too rich and it allows the engine to uh, remove fuel or add fuel in order to correct it and bring it back into stoichiometric, which is 14.7 uh, parts of air to one, or 14.7 parts of air to one part fuel. So that's the job of the upstream sensors. And the job of the downstream sensors is actually just to tell the engine computer if the catalytic converter is working properly. So typically on an upstream sensor, you'll have this little graph right here. When an upstream sensor here, this is gonna be 0.9, this is 0.1. Um, as the engine is running, you're gonna see the upstream sensor cycling from rich to lean, rich to lean. This is, the engine computer is doing this. It's varying the fuel just a little bit in order to get a reading off of that sensor. And it kind of helps it, it helps it sort of balance, you know, balance on the, on the scale a little bit. You know, it needs a little bit, a little bit forward, a little bit back, you know, a little heavy, a little, little light. It kind of helps it balance like that. So that's typically gonna be what your pre-sensors look like, okay? Now your post sensor same thing, 
But when the catalytic converter is working properly, you're gonna see that it's basically just a little bit rich. Typically they'll be, you know, kind of like point, uh, 0.7, something like that, 0.8. I think usually on, on a really strong cat, let's call it 0.8. Um, that indicates that your catalytic converter is working normally. Basically the, the input oxygen can vary a little bit, but there's a, there's a reaction going on inside of your catalytic converter and it's always basically consuming all the oxygen. So you're just gonna get a really rich mixture being output all the time. That's if it's working. Usually when a catalytic converter goes bad, it'll, that reaction won't be there anymore. And the post cat sensor is gonna look exactly like the pre cat sensor. And that's your dead giveaway right there. That's how you know that your catalytic converter is toast. Sometimes uh, a catalytic converter can be going bad. And when you're idling and you're looking at this data on your scan tool, it'll look like this. It'll look like it's working. But if you rev your engine and you get your engine going at speed, you know, 2000 RPMs, 2500 RPMs, all of a sudden you'll see this change to this. And that's how you know that, uh, you know, your, your catalytic converters are bad. You know, that's, that's uh, typically like when, they're, when they just start to go, it'll be that way. So uh, we're gonna take a look at my catalytic converter, uh, my, my oxygen sensor outputs and see what's up with mine. So what I am using is my laptop computer and I'm using this software called ScanMaster ELM, which uh, you can buy for about $60. I'm using a, um, an ELM 327 Wi-Fi um, interface, which you can get on uh, Amazon for under 10 bucks. Um, some important information which I wish somebody had told me is uh, so what we do is you connect to your Wi-Fi adapter, right? And uh, go into here, go to details. This is uh, this is the IP address of the Wi-Fi adapter. It's basically your 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 gateway. So in my case, 192.168.0.10. Um, in ScanMaster ELM, the default port is going to be 23, but that's not the port of this adapter. The port is actually 35,000. So go ahead, you know, configure it, WLAN, 35,000, do that. And uh, that makes it work. So we'll go ahead and connect. Now you have to have your ignition on in order for uh, any OBD2 adapter to work. I'm gonna go ahead and select engine here. So we are connected and uh, we'll go ahead and read trouble codes. As you can see, we have a P0430. Catalyst system efficiency below threshold. That's what it is. Um, and that basically means your catalytic converter is uh, no good anymore. It's almost, it's almost definitive, guys. But this is how you confirm. So uh, I'm going to go to live data graph here. I'm going to configure this to show our O2 sensor voltages. This is typically how I like to do it. Bank one sensors on top and then bank two sensors on the bottom. And we got the pre-cats right here, and we got the post-cats right here. So I'm going to go ahead and start the car. Roll up the windows first. In order to uh, read your O2 sensor voltages, or in order for your catalytic converters to actually uh, be working properly, they actually have to be hot. You have to have driven your engine, has to be fully warmed up. Sometimes it can take as long as five minutes for them to uh, fully warm up. What I recommend is you just go driving and then go ahead and do this. So let's hit read and let's see where we are. So as you can see, uh, they are not warmed up yet. I did have the car on a little while ago, but uh, they have cooled down because I've been dicking around with the computer for about half an hour trying to figure out how to get this thing connected. Last time I used this thing, I actually was using a USB version of this adapter. So here you can see the uh, pre-cats are actually warming up again. And you can see the pre-cat sensors here and here. This is bank one, this is bank two. You can see how they're oscillating, like I was telling you. Oscillating between 0.1 volts down here, 0.9 volts up here. Actually, not uh, it's not peaking quite where it should be yet because it's not fully warmed up. 
And uh, typically when your cats are uh, not working, you're gonna see them around you know, 0.4 like this. This is the stoichiometric value. But like I said, your, post, your catalytic converters typically run a little rich when they're working. They're, they should be around between 0.7 and 0.8 once they're warmed up and working. That's how you know when, when they get warmed up is they kinda, they kinda come up to around 0.7 or 0.8. Uh, we're gonna wait for this thing to warm up. Some, sometimes what you can do is you can just run your engine at speed a little bit. That can kind of help them warm up. It can also kind of wake them up, as you can see. Here we go, a little bit. Now right here you can see bank one, sensor two. So again, this is cylinders one through three. This one appears to be working, as you can see. It's about 0 0.7, 0 0.8. We're at idle right now. See that, that's looking perfect. Okay, now bank two, not looking so perfect. You can see bank two is pretty darn lean. It's kind of indicating no reactions going on at all. Bank one is indicating that there's some reaction going, going on. But what we now need to do is run the engine at speed. So I'm going to uh, try to hold the speed at around 2000 RPMs here. All right, we're at about 2,000. And as you can see, the O2 sensors, the post-cat O2 sensors are cycling up and down between rich and lean. That is an indication, a definitive indication that these catalytic converters are done. There's really no need to go any further. When you see something like this, when your engine's running at speed, your cats are done. And that is it. That's that's pretty much as far as we need to go guys so we'll go ahead and we will shut this down and I'm gonna go ahead and actually change my catalytic converters I'm not gonna do this now because the cats are boiling hot it's tonight this is actually Friday night I am going to do this tomorrow morning uh, when everything has cooled down so I've got the old exhaust manifolds off and let me show you the new ones they are, of course, not brand new. They're used. Uh, it's really the only option, guys. I mean, just new ones are like 1200 each for OEM ones. And I mean, I don't even know how much the, uh, the aftermarket ones are, but these I think were like $180 delivered from eBay. Supposedly, if they're from a low mileage car, like uh, around 100,000 miles or something like that, uh, you know, uh, there's no way to really know for sure. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to take a chance and throw them on and hopefully they're good. Um, I had to transfer these studs over from the old ones. You just bang them out with a sledgehammer, spray some WD-40 on them and bang them out with a sledgehammer. Of course, uh, I can only do that because I'm in California. If you're back east somewhere, you're probably gonna have to cut these off in order to even get your exhaust manifolds out. To replace these, these are $16 each if you want to use the OEM studs. So uh, that's that's a little too expensive, probably. So you can just use normal um, nuts and bolts for, for doing that. Not a big not a big deal. So anyway, um, I've uh, cleaned these up. They were they're pretty rusty. You know, they came from back east somewhere. You can see a lot of surface rust on them. But for the most part, it's just surface rust, so it's fine. I uh, I I cleaned up the faces with a sander and these faces as well. So. That's it. I'm just going to throw these on and we'll see if they work. All right, guys, I've got everything put back together. I have uh, already started it off camera. Sorry. Uh, I just wanted to get it warmed up and everything. Uh, you know, when you when you do this, when you install new cats or change your cats or whatever, uh, when when you first start it up, they're going to smoke a little bit. So that's normal. Don't worry about that. It burns off pretty quickly, though. If it continues smoking, then you have an exhaust leak. I'll tell you what guys, it was, uh, it was really nice when I started this thing up and it made all the right noises, you know? That was, uh, I was happy to hear that. So I've uh, got our O2 sensors pulled up here and uh, we're idling right now. As you can see, things are looking good at idle. Our uh, bank one sensors are cycling as they should be. Bank two sensors are steady straight across. Uh, about 0.8 volts, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 volts, right where they should be. Now, the big test, we gotta raise the revs to about 2,000 or whatever. Just pick something, hold it steady. <clears throat> and we are looking great. As you can see, 
we're, ba we're basically holding you know, small variations here that I'm not too worried about that but yeah we're holding as you can see it's much much better than it was before you know basically the the bank two sensors were matching what the bank one sensors were doing now you can see these cats are working so yeah this is a fix so yeah that should be good enough to get us past the smog man uh, yeah, it's kind of a joke here in California. They don't even stick the, the, the probe in the tailpipe anymore. They don't, you know, they don't really test the emissions. All they do is plug the scan tool in, into, the, into the OBD2 port. And as long as all your engine monitors are set except for your EVAP monitor, that can still be pending. But as long as the rest of them are set, you pass smog. And we're supposed to be the most stringent state in the nation. So I don't know. Go figure. But yeah, we should be able to pass now. Well... I am tired. I'm exhausted actually. It's a long job. It took me two hours to get the old ones out and like three or four hours to put the new ones in just because I was, I don't know, hot and tired and uh, it, I dropped the bolts many times and uh, it was quite frustrating. I really am not a fan of this particular job. I hope you never have to do it, but if you do, good luck and I uh, hope it's successful for you. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'm the 50s Kid. Thanks a lot for watching.